So, a few announcements. A few. Something's getting ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway. So, a few announcements uh -oh. before we go now on. Lost it. Lost it. Lost it. No, they lost it. Okay. Uh -oh. Well, I'll go on with the announcements. So, we still don't have our new soundboard and stuff, but we're getting closer. All right. So praise the Lord. One thing, uh, just in regard to that note, we did on the iPad recorded the Les Nellhoff's funeral last Friday, and uh, Anne with Caden Fisher's help, praise the Lord, got it onto our YouTube. And uh, is it on the church website too? Okay, yeah. So it's not quite the same, but it's there. We're going to try to do the same with today's service. Of course, it's. Uh, Anyway, 
It's not as good as normal, but it's there. So praise the Lord for that. I want to say this arrangement here and the one on my right, those are both given in memory of Les Melha. As I said, his funeral was here this last Friday morning. So we want to continue to pray for Kathy and the family during this time. Families with kids in uh, fifth grade and down, the Keys for Kid devotional for the summer, July, August, September, is out in the social hall against the west wall. There's one per family, you know how it works. So try to remember to pick that up after church today, please. And read that, use that with your kids. Also, not in the announcements, but we sure could use somebody who'd like to do the bulletin board in the social hall for the month of July. There's plenty of other months after that. Uh, the sign-up sheet is on the information cabinet in the narthex. Those that have creative abilities, it's always beautiful to look at that. The men, on Father's Day today, after church, we have a bottle of Dad's root beer for you. <laughs> So make sure you get that on the way out, all right? Uh, Christian Ed Committee will be helping to pass those out. You can have a root beer float this afternoon, right? Yeah, it'd be awesome. This evening we have the Garms family here in, I'll say concert. It's not really that they do a concert, but uh, music is a big part of the evening. It's a family of eight, mom and dad, their young adult children. They play all kinds of stringed instruments. They play the piano. They play, I forget what all else. We had them here last year in August. I was totally impressed. I hope everybody else was. But I, I hope you can all come. You'll be very blessed today. They just minister in God's word as well. So that's at 7 o'clock this evening. We'll have a free will offering. And I'll, I'll just say this, normally we ask for the checks to be written to the church. This is different. They prefer, if you're going to give an offering by check, just make it to the Garms family this evening. A couple weeks from today, next Sunday is the 26th of June, and we come to July 3rd. That means we do not gather for church here on July 3rd. We go to the city park, weather permitting. If not there, then we'll be at the gym at school community patriotic worship service and that starts at 10 o'clock if we're at the park you should bring your own lawn chairs for that there's a lot of other announcements to read and i'll let you do that as you have time let's bow our heads please heavenly father we come to you as our father as the word of god even says call out Abba, Father, a term of endearment. We love you, Lord God Almighty, with all of our hearts. We thank you for your constant care and watchfulness over each of our lives every day that we live on this earth. Things that you protect us from that we're not even aware of much of the time. Challenges that we go through, that you walk with us and carry us on wings as eagles, as you also say in your word. We love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and all of our strength. For, Father, you are the Ancient of Days, our Maker, our Creator. And we worship you in spirit and in truth. Jesus is our King. We thank you for walking out the plan of redemption as you came to live on this earth for our salvation. So, Father, we give our praises to you. We ask that you would fill this sanctuary with your glory and your power, the presence of the Spirit of the living God, and move among us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So, number 143 in your hymnal, 143 will be our opening hymn. We'll stand together as we sing, This is my Father's Word. Stand, please. This is what God is 
dads and the grandpas, for the men of the congregation, those that are here today, those that are not able to be here, Father. We lift ourselves to you. It is a big, great responsibility that we take very seriously as being fathers, grandfathers, 
mentors to nieces and nephews, other younger men. We ask for your guidance and your direction and your wisdom as you help us to live for you and to honor you as we lead our homes towards you, Jesus. So thank you. We pray for Kevin and uh, Karen Grasser as they're over there doing mission work in Nepal. Watch over them, Lord. Keep them safe. And we ask that you'd work through them mightily by your spirit to those people that they are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to. We pray for Jean and LaBelle Gross, over in Gwinnett. Uh, Jennifer's aunt and uncle, especially Jean, who's been put on hospice care. Watch over them, this couple, Lord, together as they struggle with health issues. Thank you for all the caregivers that are involved in their lives as you minister your comfort to them. We continue to pray for Kathy Melhoff and her family, certainly her, her siblings, as they uh, are with their dad this weekend as he is in hospice care. Thank you, Lord, that when that time is right, you'll take him to yourself. We know that. And we praise you for the promises of salvation that come to us through Christ alone. We lift up uh, these, Bill and Judy, on their anniversary yesterday, John and Melanie tomorrow. Father, thank you for blessing them. With many more years, we pray for this girl, Kayla and Salas, and her family down in St. Louis. Lord, Kayla. She needs some miracles, Father. And you are a miracle-working God. So we lift her up to you and thank you for guiding the doctors and all who are working with her. These others listed as well. A little girl, Casey, who lost a part of a toe and um, went, underwent surgery in a mower accident this week. And also uh, Brittany Kluth's grandpa, who's diagnosed with cancer. So many things to lift before you. Pray for our sister Sue, who's in the hospital in Sierra Vista. Father, we pray for our nation, the outpouring of your spirit that we so desperately need, as our challenge, Lord, is every time we are asking you for rain in the natural, for our crops, for this earth, we ask for rain, the spiritual rain upon our land to bring revival. And so we do. We trust you for that. Thank you for our troops that serve you so faithfully here at home and abroad. Keep them safe, Lord. Be with those families who are separated, husband and wife, and dads and children, or moms and their children, whatever it might be. Be with our nation's leaders, Father. Guide them by your Spirit. Whether they know you or not, your word says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. You turn it whithersoever way you will, even as you turn the rivers of water. So we trust you in all of these things, and we praise you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we have some new members that we are going to receive today before we go on with the rest of our service. So the Shots family, if you want to come up, and Carla, Sokup, if you want to come, please.
time, right? <laughs> right. And her husband, Tom, who now his main job is a rural mail carrier. He did do auto repair mechanic business for many years there in Trent and still does a little. A little. <laughs> we won't advertise that too much. Their younger daughter, Gracie, here, she's going to be a senior in high school at Trip Delmont. And she was at Girls State just over Memorial Day weekend. And out of 200 girls, there were four scholarships awarded, and she was one of the recipients. So, <laughs> And then her older sister, Kennedy, here, is holding Asher. Going to be a year old next Sunday, I think. Oh, she was. I have this book wrong. On the 26th of May, she was a year old, sorry. And, and then her fiance, Jordan Gregerson. Their wedding is in October scheduled. So, Kennedy works at Mitchell at the clinic there. Our student, I'm just messing with <laughs> <laughs> oh, Too much to remember. I even have our student written in my notes. But I get for not looking at the notes. And Jordan, his, he works with his family at a hog confinement over by Armour. I wasn't even going to say it. Armour. So this is who they are. We are excited to have you. I have uh, four questions that I will ask you that you have had already before that we've gone over. So first and most important, do you acknowledge and profess that you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior. If so, answer, I do. Thank you. Do you promise to be Christ's disciples, to follow his word and his will for your lives, and to resist evil and oppression in the world through the power of the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, we do. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating his presence, and furthering his mission in all the world. If so, answer, we do. And fourth, you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this congregation as it serves this community and this region and the world in which we live. If so, answer, we do. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each of these standing up here. Carla, Tom and Amy, Gracie and Kennedy and Jordan and little Asher. All your children, Father, who you have put gifts in and wonderful talents. And we are excited that, that you have drawn them here to be a part of this congregation of your people. And so we lift them to you. And thank you for watching over them. As they go to and fro in the jobs that you have given them, we ask that you give your angels charge over them to guard and keep them in all of their ways. And Lord, for the gifts you've put within them to use in this local church, we thank you for those also. And we pray that they would grow in their walk with you, in their relationship with you. And Father, help us to be a blessing to them in whatever way that might be. Lift them up and thank you for these families standing before us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you will look on the back of the bulletins, there is a congregational response there. If you find that, I'll read first. Let us, the members of Salem Reformed Church, express our welcome to Tom and Amy Schatz, Kennedy Schatz, Jordan Gregerson, Gracie Schatz, and Carla Soka. And affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you with joy.
All right, did the children, is that all? Offering. <laughs> the offering. Let me read from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. He who leans on and trusts in and is confident in the Lord, excuse me, is confident in his own riches will fall with difference. But the righteous, the one who trusts in God's provision, will flourish like a green tree. What a great promise. Let's stand as we sing the Apostles' Creed. <laughs>
What are some things your dad would do with you? Work with you, take you, you farmers, take you in uh, tractors and teach you? What? Go to your biking? Dirt biking. Dirt biking with you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got some gifts that, that uh, Mike was given for Father's Day. And you know what else this reminds me of? Our fathers. Do you know that, you know, like my dad has passed away already. But I'm not left alone because who is my ultimate father and your father? God is our father. He's adopted each one of us. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, yay, we're in the family of God. So I'm going to see if these things would be appropriate for God too, okay? You think, let's see if God likes these things. Oh, here we go. Pastor Mike got a new Traeger. And so we got some spices. Do you think God needs the Traeger in heaven and spices? No. No? No, no I, I, know. I, don't, I don't think so either. I don't know if he grows them in heaven. What do you think? Ooh, how about this? Texas Roadhouse certificate. Do you think God would like this? No. Why not? No, because there's probably not a Texas Roadhouse in heaven, right? We don't need to worry about that. And this is one thing I always like to give to Pastor Mike, is a picture of his two children and his son-in-law. Do you think God needs pictures of us? No, no because he always, he's always sees us. Yeah, so these are not the gifts that we would give God our Father. We would give to our earthly fathers. What do you think God wants? It tells us right in the Bible, just like always. In Mark chapter 12, verse 30, and 31, this is what it says. This is what God our Father wants. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There are no greater commandments than these. So that's what God wants. He wants us to love him. What are some ways we can tell God thank you for being our father? What are some ways you boys and girls can do? Pray. Pray. You can pray and talk to him. Read your Bible. Read what he tells us. Praise him. Worship him. Obey him, right? All of these things. So today, as you go home and celebrate Father's Day, however you do it with your dad, tell him you love him. You're so thankful for him. Also thank your Father God, who loves us all the time, who's with us no matter what, all the time. Okay? Let's pray. Father, we love you so much, and we're so grateful for the earthly fathers you've given us all. But we're even more grateful for you, God. You are our Heavenly Father. You watch over us. You take care of us. You are with us. You never leave us. Help us as boys and girls and adults to never, ever forget that. No matter what we're going through, you are there with us. You are our loving Father. You will get us through. Bless these boys and girls wherever they go this week. Protect them, guide them, watch over them. Help them to be a lighthouse for you. Share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can get your computer out. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Let's sing number 130. 130 in our hymnal. It's a glorious name. We'll sing that three times.
feed our homes, our families, as, as we walk in the Lord, as we try to teach our children the Word of God. And we've been given an amazing owner's manual right here to help us along the way. And certainly the book of Proverbs is filled with practical examples. I just read part of the first chapter here. But practical examples of how Solomon tried to teach his children. Now we know there was time his life went on for Solomon. He got off course there for a while, pretty bad. But at the very end, he came back around. Thank God for his mercy to all of us. My goodness, there's, I guess I can't speak for all of you because I haven't asked all of you this question, but I can certainly say for myself, there are many times I have felt like I have failed in many ways, trying to balance, in my case, the work of the ministry and the congregation with being a dad and the family time. And you, in your jobs, careers, farming, whatever it might be, I'm sure have the very same struggles of how do we do this? And it's not easy by any means. But first, let, let's look. You have the outline in your insert if you want to fill that out there. If we go back to Second Chronicles, we find there in chapter 1 when Solomon is becoming the king of Israel, following his dad, David probably the greatest king of Israel, who before him was Saul, the first king of Israel. Each of them reigned, we know, for 40 years. Solomon, in chapter 1, verse 1 of Second Chronicles, I'm back there for a little bit, says, this is what it says, Solomon, the son of David, established himself firmly over the kingdom, for the Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. Solomon becomes king. Did I give you the blank there? Mm -hmm. Maybe didn't. But you know one thing neat about Solomon? David did this also. But Solomon, because God used Solomon to write most of the Proverbs, the first thing he does as he becomes king is to call the nation to prayer, to seek the Lord. If only we would get back to that in our nation. Yes, we have a National Day of Prayer. We've had it for a long time. But it, we'd have to go back to the early founding years of our nation to see a lot of this happening, where the leader would call the nation to a, a concentrated time of prayer, unashamedly to do it. Solomon is doing that. So Solomon, he calls, and this is going on in that first chapter of Second Chronicles, says Solomon and the assembly of the Lord there. He knew he needed help from God to lead the nation of Israel, and he admitted it. He admitted it. <laughs> Man, sometimes we don't like to admit that, especially if we're driving somewhere. And we're, of course, now we've got our iPhones with Google Maps and everything on, which I love. I always think about this going back to when Edward Narwin and Ann and I were in our conference meetings in Cleveland, Ohio, and the motel was separate from the convention center. And boy, did we get lost coming home that night trying to find that motel. Our two beloved wives kept saying, you know, we can stop and ask for directions. No, we know where, we know where we're at. We know where we're at. We're just going around in circles for an hour. Finally, we said, I would better stop for directions. <laughs> there wasn't too, we weren't too far away from that motel, but we sure couldn't find it. Solomon asked for help of the Lord. And that night after he did is when God appears to him in a dream. Most of us know that account very well. God says, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Wow. What a vision from the Lord. And so Solomon does. If we go to 1 Kings chapter 3, this is part of his prayer then to the Lord. He said, I'm only a child. He was 25 years of age when he became the first death, when he became king of Israel. 25. I'm just like a child. I don't know how to carry out my duties. So give your servant, here's his prayer, a discerning, discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who 
is able to govern this great people of yours? And it goes on and said, the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. And so he gave him that. We know what he did. He gave him wisdom and understanding beyond anyone of his day or time. Second thing, so dads, we have a huge impact. Our impact on our children's faith is huge. Dad's impact on the kid's faith is huge. We've got to know that. Back to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. This is out of the New Living. It says, He says, Listen, my child, to what your father teaches you. Don't neglect your mother's teaching. We do it together. What you learn from them will crown you with grace and clothe you with honor. And I be it said it would be like a garland. Garland we think of Christmas time a lot, right? The garland we put around the Christmas tree to make it beautiful. They will be like garland to grace your head and a chain to and a chain to adorn your neck. The kids, your parents' instruction, this is what it is to you. And your younger Younger years, teenage years, you probably don't always think that way, but I promise you, when you get into your adult life, you will realize all that has been done for you. I looked up, I, I had heard some statistics way years back, I was trying to find more recent, about the impact of dad's faith on the lives of the children and their faith. I found this. This goes back from 2016. I'm not going to read it all, but parts of it, because it's very interesting. According to the LifeWay Research Group, well, the ladies a lot of times use uh, Bible studies from LifeWay. Father's Day, not, not, I don't know about here, okay, but I'll read it. Father's Day is the holiday with the single lowest average church attendance. I was surprised. Statistically lower than Labor Day, Memorial Day, those are sort of low here, low attendance days, and even the 4th of July. Well, on that day, we're at the park. But let me say on that note, the 4th of July, you know what we usually have at that service? If we have 250, that's a big attendance. That's supposed to be the whole community. Through the school year, we usually have 200 here most every Sunday. This is interesting, especially when you consider that Mother's Day tends to be with the third highest church service attendance right after Easter and Christmas. So Mother's Day is one of the most highly attended Sundays of the year, and Father's Day one of the lowest. What does that tell us? <laughs> Scott McConnell, director of this Lifeway Research, gives this assessment. Clearly, mothers want to be present for the affirmation that is typically offered in most churches. But families are also present, knowing their attendance will honor their mother. The attendance difference between Mother's Day and Father's Day is telling, says the Scott McConnell. Either churches are less effective in affirming fathers, or families believe Christian fathers don't value their participation in worship services. Well, those are his thoughts. Surely, in this I have to say, there are other factors involved, including travel and the time of year, which I would agree with. On Mother's Day, school is still in session, very true, plus the chair of choir sings, which always helps. So families in the summer visit travel relatives on vacation a lot of times. But all these factors and statistics aside, here's what is really striking. When you see the research on the impact of a dad's faith and practice on their families, here goes some data from Promise Keepers. If a father does not go to church, even if his wife does, now if you're in that category, no condemnation. Right, I'm just giving some statistics. If a father does not go to church and his wife does, only one child in 50, that's half, will become a regular worshiper, meaning when they grow up. If a father does go regularly, regardless of what the mother does, 
between two-thirds and three-quarters of their children will attend church as adults. That's amazing. If a father attends church irregularly, between half and two-thirds of their kids will attend church with some regularity as adults. If a mother does not go to church but the father does, a minimum of two-thirds of their children will end up growing up attending church. Wow. Dad's big responsibility in our lives. God bless you for being here today. And, and, and we have a pretty good attendance. I actually looked back out of curiosity last year. We had 123. I'm not sure what's here today. Did anybody count? Oh, uh, yeah. One. Oh, Ben's got it. 163. 163. Hey, good job. June of 20, well, we were coming out of COVID, 92. We go back to June of 2019, and there were 158. What did you say? What's 163. 163, yeah. I actually looked at June of 2019, and I thought, did we have a baptism that day or what? Pretty good. We didn't. Anyway, the point of all these statistics is this. That's what I said. Dad's, now, Dad's impact on the kids' faith and practice huge. Amen? Amen. Yes. Let's go to the third point here. Solomon's instruction in Proverbs. Back to that. If you take the time to read chapters 2 through 7, they each begin with these words, my son. Chapter 2, verse 1, my son. Think, you know, if you're a daughter, put yourself in too, okay? My son, if you accept my words and store my commands within you, and then it goes on. Chapter 3, verse 1. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Chapter 4, verse 1. Listen, my son, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. 5, verse 1. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen well to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. Chapter 6, verse 1. My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, this is talking even about finances here now. If you've struck hands and pledge with another, I'm not going to read it all. Chapter 7, verse 1. My son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. And so it goes. So in these chapters, there are many subjects addressed, spiritually and naturally. And it all has to tie in together as dads and moms. This works together as we lead our children, our grandchildren. Stealing, chapter 1, Proverbs, verse 12. That whole passage, they're dealt with it. These people say, hey, come on, join with us. Let's waylay some heartless soul. Waylay him, let's trip him up, let's attack him. What, we're going to steal from him, get all sorts of valuable things, fill our houses with plunder. Solomon said, my son, do not do that. They're just laying a trap for themselves. Stealing, we know the commandments. It's one of the ten. Thou shalt not steal, right? His parents, Ann told the story on me last Sunday morning when I was just a little guy. Put that piece of candy in my pocket in the grocery store. I wasn't thinking that I was stealing. I don't know what I was thinking. Got out the car and started unwrapping it. And my mom's like, where'd you get that candy? I probably didn't say anything. Get out of that car right now. Oh, boy, I was crying before we went back into the store. I should never forgot it. <laughs> From that day, one other time we were in middle school, Mark and I walking home. This was in Arlington, Nebraska. You've heard this story some of you before. We always walked back and forth. I don't know, six, eight blocks, whatever it was. It was early on in the walk home. There's an old five buckle over. She lay in the gutter. Well, what do we do as middle school kids? We start kicking it all the way home. Taking turns, kicking it all the way home down the street. 
Our dad's working in the garage when we get home on the car or something. Probably on the car, changing oil, I don't know. And, he, and we kick it in the garage, even. What's that? Oh, it's just laying in the gutter on the way home from school. Is it yours? No. You go take it back right now. Put it right where you found it. Dad, we are not taking that thing all the way back there. You are taking it back there. <laughs> right now. Both of you. Get going. No, no, no. We grumbled all the way back to Those things you never forget. You could probably all tell stories about that. You never forget those teaching moments in your life with our kids. How about another deal? Our obedience to God. He deals with that in these chapters. What about the words that we speak? That's the blank there. The words that we speak. Chapter 6 of Proverbs. He says there's six things the Lord hates. I'm not going to read them all. But one of them is a lying tongue. Another one in there is a false witness who pours out lies. Our words are important. I have to say this. Uh, I, the only time that I ever heard my dad swear was when he was working on the car. <laughs> <laughs> and he, we've talked about this over the years. And the worst the word was was the S-H. You know, that's as far as it got ever with him. So, anyway, enough on that. Other thing, Proverbs, it teaches us about money. He's teaching his son about money, all these things. In chapter 3, our giving to the Lord. Honor the Lord with your wealth, chapter 3 of verse 9, Proverbs, with the first fruits of all of your crops, or increase. Talks about borrowing and co-signing, even in Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 1. He's like, don't do it. I mean, if it's your child or something, okay, but co-signing in the Word of God is not necessarily your done highly. How about our work habits? Chapter 6, verse 6, he goes into that. Look at the ant, you slugger. He says, consider its ways and be wise. Don't be like the, the sluggards who says a little sleep, a little slumber, little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty's going to come. Poverty is going to come. The, the Midwest work ethic is known across the nation. It really is. The Midwest rural farming work ethic. And it needs to be. That's part of our job as parents. Decision making, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And that verse goes on. Marriage, sexuality, is that in Proverbs? Yeah. You read chapter 5, 6, and 7, and you'll find it in all three chapters. This wisdom that as parents, we teach our children. So where do we begin in all this? Pretty easy. Fourth point, we have to teach the fear of the Lord. The, the fear of the Lord, that God is holy. There, there are consequences to our actions to things we do, that society is not just a free-for-all as where we're living now. And if you try to challenge it, then you're a hater. No, God is not a hater. God gives us boundaries because he loves us. Incredibly, he loves us. Chapter 1, verse 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's where we start. This, my son, my daughter, is why we preach and teach what we do. Because we fear God, we fear his word, we reverence him, we honor him, and we do our best to try to follow his teachings. It's not that we're trying to be mean or anything about it. It's because we love you, son, daughter. And there might be times, as parents you know, if you've had any years of raising your kids at all, where they might say to you, you don't love me. But you know you do. And time will tell as the years go on where they will see that. And they'll come back around and say, thank you for doing whatever, whatever. It might be something even that as parents we've almost forgot about. 
And they remind us because it's so burned in their mind and in their heart. Chapter 9, verse 10, Proverbs says the same thing. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So this is what we teach. A reverential fear of God and his word. We try to lead by example in simple ways. If when we come into the sanctuary as men, we take our caps off, right? That's in God's word. And certainly we should hear if we, when we stand for the national anthem and it is said, remove your caps. And everybody does in honor of our nation and our freedoms. And so we do hear. That's, you think, oh, okay. So that, that's part of teaching the reverence of God. A very simple thing. Praying together. We teach our children to fear the fear of the Lord by letting him know his character and his attributes. And on and on it goes. There's many examples I could give. So those are the challenges before us. As parents, grandparents, as we work together and do our best. And God bless you here today and the rest of the congregation who work so hard in all of these ways. I can look at everyone and see amazing examples of this in your lives. So thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, as dads, grandpas, spouses, families, we ask for your help, Lord, to lead in our homes. It's not always easy by any Give us wisdom when decisions are hard, when we don't know where to turn, when we're in a situation where it seems there's no way out, and yet we know there always is in your time. Thank you for your mercy to all of us. Thank you for your patience with us when we have all messed up. And you forgive us and you draw us back to yourselves and you work in our lives in incredible ways. Be with the families of this congregation, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So we trust and obey. And that's our closing hymn. Thanks for the amen over there from Little Evelyn. <laughs> Number 571, we'll stand and sing this together. Remember to get your dad's root beer, all the men, the adult men. So let's have somebody at that exit and that exit there, okay? Well, 571, trust and obey. Thanks, dear.
Thank you. 